Hello Rail fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. I've recently got a request to do a grain elevator. And I've never done anything like this before, so this is kind of a prototype build. This is what it looks like, all completed. So let's get into the build here. So this is what I'm starting with. I didn't think I needed to do a tutorial on all this. I have this track coming off my main track over there, so rail cars can get down here. Obviously, the layout's going to be different based on where you're building it in your world. Over here, I have some basalt for a little parking lot type area coming out to the road over there. Next to that, I'm using clay for a big concrete slab. And then there's some rails coming across, and I've already copied in a hopper car. On the other side of it, we just have a bunch of clay. And this is about 60 blocks long and about 25 blocks wide. Just to make sure we have room to build everything. And if you'll notice here, one thing that's common with these industrial tracks is the rails are submerged into the concrete here. So now that I've showed you all the base here, we'll get into the actual build. So I'm going to come along the side of the car here, in front of this first lower unloading bay with polished deep sleeve. On the third block out from the side, we're going to come up by 14 blocks. Once you have 14, we'll start coming across over the top of the car like this. And down on this side, we're going to make another column. Make sure it's lined up with this one. And the same thing on the third block out. And bring that right up until we can meet up on the top here. Then, coming off this top corner here we're gonna come out with our polished deep slate by 10 blocks then once we have that we'll come down underneath it and bring it straight down to the ground off that corner all the way down then we'll come back up to the top here we'll come across this way and this way, and we're just going to square it off on top here. Once we have them meeting up, come underneath it again, and bring it straight down to the ground here. Once we have that, we're going to take out polished deep slate walls, and we're going to start in this bottom corner, put one, then two above it, and we're just going to keep stepping it over one and up one all the way across until it meets up with the post on the other side here and put one above it so it looks right then we'll start from this corner and we'll do the same thing stepping over one and up one you're gonna kind of have a box in the middle here so that corner up one over one up one over one up one over one one above it on the corner here. So we have this X-shaped bracing pattern. Then above that, we're gonna come straight across with our polished deep slate walls. Above that, a row of iron bars. Then we'll come underneath and a row of iron bars underneath this top. In the middle of the iron bars, we'll do another full row of polished deep slate walls coming across. Then we're going to come over and do the exact same thing on this other side of the car here. So polished deep slate walls starting here, one on bottom, two here, over one and up one, all the way across. So we have the nice diagonal beam.
then come down to this corner, one here, two here, and start coming over one and up one until it connects. Then one right here, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, one on that top. Above it, a full row of walls. Above that, a row of iron bars. Then a row of iron bars up here. And a row of polished deep slate walls across the middle of this here. Now we'll come over on top of this, in the middle of this beam, we'll put a row coming across of polished deep slate. Then turn this way and in the middle of this, a row coming this way. So we have a nice center point there. Then we'll put a stone button on each side of these top corners, going all the way around like this. Make sure it's on the very top. Same thing over here. Same thing over here. Now I'm going to take out a block of tough, and I'm going to knock out this center block and put that in the center. Come underneath it and extend it down by two here. Then we'll come back above it, and right in this center, we're going to use our tough block to make a three by three. Then we'll come up by one, and we're going to come out by one on each side. So we have three sticking out over the edge of each side like this. Just like that. Now we'll come up a layer and extend it out again. So three sticking out here, then there'll be one in that corner, three sticking out across here. Same thing, one in this corner, three coming across here, one in the corner, three more across here, and one in this corner. Next, we're gonna go all around the outside edge of this and raise it upwards another nine blocks tall above this. Once we have that raised up, we're going to come in by one on this layer. So we'll basically be skipping these corners and putting three coming across each side here. Just like that. Then above that, a three by three in the middle. And finally, one single block in the very middle. So it looks like this. Then we're going to take polished deep slate walls right here on each of these beams and rise them up so it looks like it's supporting this on all four of these beams here. Now we're going to come underneath here so it looks like this is actually loading the car. So come up lined up with the center where this is sticking down, knock out this slab and the block under it, and then two on each side like that so it looks like this middle hatch is open. Inside of here we'll stack up some dripstone blocks. Put three right here, maybe one right there. Then we'll take pointed dripstone and we're gonna stack it coming down underneath here so it looks like it's pouring down into this car. We'll actually knock out that block and put a right side up one so it looks like it's pouring nicely. Maybe stack some there and there. So now it's pouring down into the car there. Now we're going to take smooth stone blocks aligned with the center of this and we're going to start on the fourth block out from the edge of this. We're gonna make a three by three 
and we're gonna raise that up until it's 38 blocks tall in total. Here I didn't quite have it 38 blocks yet because I was lining it up. We're taking polished black stone walls off the center of that bay above the car and we're stepping it over one and up one. And we're just going to keep coming up until it's aligned above this here. Then I finish raising it. This is still a total of 38 blocks tall. Then we'll put one in the center, another three coming up on the center here. Then we're going to take out polish andesite stairs and a polish andesite slab. We're going to come around this very top with polish andesite stairs. So it wraps around all these corners like this. and then a slab on the top middle. So we should have something looking like this. Then we're gonna come all the way down to the bottom. Now we're gonna take out polished black stone stairs facing this way right here off this corner and start raising stairs up too wide. When we get to the edge, a two by two of polished black stone blocks. Then we'll do the same thing around this corner. Two wide of stairs coming up two by two of polished black stone blocks. And we're gonna keep going all the way around like this. When it gets to this level, I'm gonna connect it right up to this. And then we'll continue with our pattern of two wide stairs coming up. And then a two by two of polished black stone for a landing. And we're going to keep going all the way around like this till it gets to the top. When we get to the very top, we'll put two polished black stone right here. So you can actually walk all the way up to the top here. Now we're going to come down and we're going to take out a polished black stone wall and we'll come off this corner here and we'll bring it all the way down to the ground. This is going to be making like a support frame for the staircase. Make sure it connects with the ground. Then we'll come above it and we'll bring it up all the way to the top here. Keep bringing it up. When we get up by this top here, we're going to make it come three blocks above that landing there. Then we'll start coming across sideways like that. And to make sure we have our length right, we'll start our next column. So we'll come down here come off this corner this time. Do the same thing, we'll bring it down to the ground and up to the top. Right till it connects up with this horizontal beam here. Now we're gonna come over and we're gonna make beams on this other side here. So we'll connect it up off this landing here and do the same thing. Go down to the ground with it and up to the top with it. When we get up to the top here, we'll make a horizontal beam coming across this way to connect them. Now we'll 
come down here and do this corner. And we'll do it the same thing. Start right here, coming off on this side, and raise it all the way to the top. When we get to the top, we'll put a horizontal beam coming this way, and another one coming across here just to square everything off. Now the framework's done here. Now we'll take dark oak fence for a railing here. Start here over one and up one. And we'll come over one and up one till we're at the top of the stairs. And out and to the side here. And we're gonna keep doing that all the way around the stairs going up. Start right here, over one and up one, up the stairs, until you reach the next level here, and then over here, and we'll just keep doing that around and around until we're at the top. When we get to this level where it's connected, we're going to bring it right out onto this and then one over here, and one right there, one here, and we're gonna take out a dark oak fence gate and put it right here in case maintenance workers need to climb out on that. Then we'll continue up with our pattern here all the way to the top. It coming. It's very tedious. Then once we get up here, we're gonna put fence gates across here so there's a railing when the workers come up here. Up here we'll put a grindstone in the corner and two levers right here for controlling these conveyor belts. Then we're going to take out redstone torches and put it on each of these four corners to be warning lights for airplanes, because this thing's kind of tall. Now we're going to come over here with a stone block. We're going to be on the fourth block over from these train tracks, and we're on the 13th block out from that first column. We're going to make a row of five blocks here. Then we'll step in, make a row of two, then one, then two going this way, then five going this way, then two, one, two going this way, five coming this way, two, one, two going this way, then five, then two, one, two going that way. So we have this nice circle shape. And we're going to raise this up until it's a total of 18 blocks tall. And just keep it coming until it's 18 blocks tall. It's another long, tedious task, I know. Now, once we have that, above it, we're gonna step in by one block from the outside edge and raise it up two blocks tall like that. So step in here 
and go all the way around inside by one like that. Once we've done that, we're gonna step in by one again and two blocks tall again. And just go around the inside edge two blocks tall. Above that, we're gonna step in again except this time we're just going around the edge one block in from the outside and it's only going to be one block tall. So just keep coming around here. All the way across here and around to this other side. Then we're going to step in again here and another row that's only one block tall coming around so we're starting to get this pointed cone shape on the top of this now here so it doesn't just look like a square on top I'm gonna add one block in each of these inside corners then we'll step up another single layer inside one from the outside. Then we're gonna make this just a three by three. Then I did a plus shape and one on top, but I didn't like how that looked here. So I took the top one off and I'm making the 3x3 three three below this the plus shape and taking the top plus shape off as well. So turn that into a plus shape, fill in the holes, one in the middle. That looks a little better. Next come up here with a polished black stone wall to complete this here. I put it in the wrong spot, put one on there. Then we're gonna put two polished black stone walls like this. And we're gonna come over one and we're gonna start stepping it down and over one, coming out towards this big silo that we just made. And just keep bringing it over one and down one. And I'm kinda of playing it by eye here until it's gonna be about the same level as the top of that silo. So that's looking about right. Now take out a smooth stone block, come off the middle of this silo coming this way until it's aligned with this black stone wall. And come over on this side and fill in another row like this here. Till it gets right there. Then above it we're gonna put polished andesite stairs facing this way. Come over here so it wraps around the corner and facing this way up this side. So now that silo is connected to the elevator. Then we're gonna put smooth stone slabs across the bottom of this. make it double slaps on the end here. Coming off the bottom of that, a row of two polished black stone walls coming all the way down to the bottom to be the support holding that up. Bring it right down to the ground here. Just like that. Now we'll come up on the top of this here with our slabs and extend it out on this side just like that. Over to the middle. 
we'll do the same thing over here on this side. And then we're gonna take iron bars right there. We're gonna come out two and bring iron bars up so there's a railing up here. This is just in case maintenance workers need to get up and work on this. Then we'll come around this end of it with iron bars out to right here. We'll bring it back up so there's bars on this side as well. And we'll bring it right over here. And we'll come around here and connect it to the middle right there. Now we'll take polished blackstone stairs, one here and one here. And we'll just start raising the stairs up on the side of this conveyor here. And I'm kind of playing it by eye on how high to come to meet this up here. So right there I brought it too high. So I'm gonna knock out the top stair and replace it. We'll knock out that one as well here. Then two polished black stone is going to be coming across here. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do here. So now it meets up with that and we'll put two ladders right here. This is going to be a little walkway so the workers can actually climb down to the top of that side. Then we're going to take out iron bars for a railing, put one here. On this side come out then we'll just start bringing it down one and over one so there's a railing on this side of the walkway. We don't need to do it on the other side because those polished black stone walls are there. So just keep bringing it over one and down one here. All the way down. then right here we'll go ahead and put one more so it looks right so now the workers can climb this whole center elevator and then climb down to the top of that silo so we should be looking something like this right about now next we'll come down here and build a small unloading bay on the bottom of this so in the middle of this five wide face here we're gonna make a three by five of our stone blocks. Then polish andesite stairs facing this way over here and facing this way over here. Then a row of slabs across the top middle with a second slab up on the end. This way they could unload it from the bottom as well if they want. Now we're going to build a little office for this place and I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to bring stone brick blocks out nine till the end here and actually a tenth one on this side then we'll come back this way by five and we'll turn it into a rectangle and we'll go ahead and fill all this in nothing fancy here just a small area for the workers to clock in and out and a little office then we'll put four stone brick stairs right here with an end stone brick on either side then we'll put end stone bricks coming like this on both sides I was trying to decide how I want to do the door here then we'll come around the whole bottom outside edge of this with end stone bricks Then I'll come over here and make a back door for this place. And we'll put it right here. Three stone brick stairs in front of it and stone bricks on the sides of the stairs. Then an end stone wall on bottom and on front of those bricks. Same thing here and here. And actually I'm gonna line up these doors here. So this front door is only one block wide as well. And I'll move this all over by one so it looks symmetrical. Then we'll come up 
and we'll frame in this door here. And then a column of two on each end like this, and another one on this side. Then we'll fill this in too high, come around here too high, across the top of this doorway, too high to this corner, and a 2x2 two two right there. Then we'll put glass panes where we left these gaps, so there's some windows for this building. Then we'll come on top and go around another layer of end stone bricks all the way around it. Once we've gone all the way around the top of this little building, we're going to come over and come inside and build a little interior for it here. It's just trying to figure out what I wanted to do here. So on this end, we're going to put two crafting tables, then a two by two of bookshelves. Turn here, we'll put some lecterns. Over here, we'll put a double chest and another lectern. They have some tools and supplies over here. Now we'll build a little desk. So two beehives facing this way with a slab in the middle. Turn around, put a stair here for a chair. Then a beacon for a computer monitor and a trapdoor for the keyboard. So we have a nice little office in there. Then we'll put a door on each side here. Now we're going to come on top here with end stone brick stairs. And I was having some trouble there. We need to get them upside down facing outwards. And then we'll just wrap right around the corner. So there's a little bit of extra detail and three dimensionality to this building. When you get here, wrap it around the corner again, facing outward this way. Wrap around the corner again, come across here. around this corner until it meets up. Come in here on the second block down from the top and we're going to make a ring of white carpet going around for the ceiling. We'll put two sea lanterns here, two here, come underneath them and put trap doors around them on the bottom so they look like fluorescent lights. Fill in the rest of this with white carpet then we'll do the actual roof. For that I'm going to use cobble deep slate. Just fill all this in with cobble deep slate. Then we're going to take a smooth stone slab and go all the way around the edge of this roof so there's a little lip. And just bring it all the way around. Then we'll build a little air conditioner for this place. So a two by two of iron and we'll make rails in a circle on top for the fan. Then a wall and a trap door on top for a little exhaust. Then I'm just grabbing some supplies here. We're gonna make a little electricity meter where the electric comes into the building here. So on back of this we're gonna put another brick wall, smooth stone, smooth stone slab. On the front an item frame with a compass for the power meter. Now we'll come over here and build some lights for this little parking area. So I'm going to take out a block of netherite right here, or wherever you want to put it. And I'm going to use deep slate brick walls for the post, and you can raise this up as high as you want your parking lot's lights to be. Doesn't really matter. Then we'll come forward by one, back by one, put a sea lantern on each of these corners like this and then three deep slate brick slabs across the tops and we'll come build another one of these over here so a block of netherite for the base here make sure it's aligned with the other light so it looks right deep slate brick walls raised up for your post however high you made your other light Once we get it raised up, one coming off the front, 
one coming off the back. A sea lantern in each corner. And three deep slate brick slabs coming across the tops like this. So now, it's a little more realistic with some parking lot lights here. If you wanted to, you could even add in some slabs for the concrete dividers in front of the parking spaces so the cars don't run over onto the train tracks. Now I'm going to swing around over here and we're going to build a little bumper for the end of this track so the cars don't derail. I'm going to take another brick wall right here, raise it up too high, too high right here. Then one coming forward off it like that on each side, one coming this way, and then down. Actually make it two before it comes down. Then two more on the ground like this. We'll put in some cross bracing here. Then on the fronts of these we'll close trap doors. Whatever trap door you want. Just so it looks like a little spring loaded bumper here. Then we could be done at this point here, but we have that big open area back here, so I'm going to add some more to this. So I'm going to come over here with an andesite block. Just somewhere in this big open area, the placement isn't too important. And we're going to make another little circle shape here on the bottom. So we're going to take our andesite block, we're going to put a row of four coming this way. Then one on each end, kitty corner. Then four on each side coming this way, kitty corner. Four across, so you have this circle shape. Then I'm gonna skip a block and build another one the exact same way. So you'll have two circles here, just to fill in this space. And this one isn't too imperative. You can make these silos as tall as you want. And just keep raising this circle up until they get however tall you want them to be here. We do the same thing for the other one until it's at the same height. Then on top, we'll step in by one and put a single layer coming around. And we'll do the same thing for this one. Then I'm going to add ones in these corners just so it's not a square. Same thing over here. Then we'll step in by one on each side here. Same thing here. Step in by one on each side here. And it's just easier to fill it all in like this. Then on the top, a two by two on each one. Then we'll take polished black stone walls, two wide, and we'll bring them straight across the top of both of these. We'll come out one past on this end, and then we'll come down by one. Then out one and down one again, out one and down one again, out one and down one again. Then we'll bring them straight down the side of this till it gets to the bottom here. That way, there's a way to get the product into these silos. On this very bottom here, I'm gonna make a two by three of andesite and then another two by two on top. Put trap doors on top of that. Then, a 2x2 two two of nether brick walls on either side of it. So there's somewhere to load these silos. And there we have it folks. We've completed our grain elevator here. 
I didn't do any of the surrounding details, and I purposely made it in as small of a footprint as I could, so that you can fit it wherever you need to fit it in your world. Like on mine, I'll probably have a road coming up from that main street back here for semis to unload, and maybe even have another spur track coming off here to store some extra train cars. You can really go crazy and build whatever you want to build. You could even make it longer and add multiple silos if you wanted, but this was just to get the basics in. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there, Railfans.